All right, so we're talking about basic figure proportions. Um, I've got a bunch of Proco videos linked up here, which you can take a look at, that show different proportion uh, systems. Uh, this drawing is uh, Steve Hampton. He was my teacher in school and also the author of uh, Figure Drawing Design and Invention book. I love how he draws and color codes everything. It's always really visually spectacular. Um, but what we're talking about is body proportions. You will probably or have already run into uh, body proportion formulas that say the figure is exactly eight heads high or seven heads high or seven and a half heads high or whatever and this is how long an arm is and this is how big the rib cage is and this is how big everything is and the thing about those is that they usually don't work for very long okay every human being is slightly different shaped just by our nature and so formulas for proportions don't work for more than basic idealized figures um, they're different by gender, they're different by race, they're different by age, they're different by um, exercise level, you know, all sorts of different reasons. But because it's difficult to draw a human being accurately, we want to have some sort of system to rely upon so that you can check your work. And these two are about as good as it gets. The one on the left is, I think, Loomis, and that is an eight head high um, male and female. And on the right is a seven and a half head high, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half head high um, skeletal structure. Either one of those is fine. Okay. What we don't want is for your body to have a head which is wildly out of proportion for the body or arms that are far too short or far too long. So these systems are meant to be as a sort of double check to say, did I do something crazy or completely impossible or not? Okay. Other than that, you just sort of start to rely on your taste and your intuition after you get enough experience drawing people. So just know that early on, we probably do want to lean heavier on proportional measurement because it's more likely you're going to draw someone wildly out of proportion. But later, you just sort of slowly abandon that sort of thing in favor of other systems. Um, I did show how accurate it can be with photographic people. So these guys are all about seven and a half or eight, and they are different statures, so they are scaled. Um, these are not how big they would be compared to each other. This guy on the left is probably far taller, and the one on the right I think is shorter. But within the body, what we're talking about is how big this person's head is versus how long their body is. And that tends to hold pretty true regardless of gender, regardless of race, as long as you're an adult. Okay, as long as you're an adult, it tends to hold true. There's also this interesting one, which is the space from the top of the head to the shoulders, and that space being almost to the end of the rib cage and then to the end of the pubic bones, which is kind of an interesting one, but it's not something that you would normally identify, although these um, ends of the rib cage are usually visible. Um, this is visible just by nature that the body ended there, or at least the hip bones are going to be somewhere around there. And then they use the halves of the body is this is one half and this is one half and if you divide that in half it's about where the kneecap is so that's kind of neat I haven't used that one before but I thought it was kind of cool um, I'm more used to the head system up here and then taking that same system and applying it to different ages I just found this family portrait of some people and uh, scaled it it works great for the adults and pretty well for the older children. If they were teenagers, I think it would work perfectly. But for the small children, it doesn't really work because this is kind of the way that children grow in proportion. And I, I do mean kind of. Don't take this as gospel. This is not exactly how children grow. But you can kind of see what I like is the diagonal lines being drawn through the same markers on each one of the bodies. So the end of the pubic bone, uh, the knee, and this one I think is the center of the sternum. And you could probably do it again for like the chin or the top of the head, but it's interesting to see that the head size doesn't really change very much, but the body size changes a lot, particularly the length of limbs. Okay, so keep that in mind. If you're drawing someone younger, you're going to have uh, fewer heads high, right? So one, two, three, four for this young child. And then as they age, so this one, a 10 year old to 12 year old, one, two, three, four, five, six seven even and then these ones would be seven and a half or eight for adults so that's the kind of interesting thing 
Do I count that right? Yeah, I counted that right. Um, so that's basic figure proportions. Any questions about basic figure proportions? None whatsoever. You have absolutely no questions. You know totally about this. Why are you guys taking a figure class if you already know so much about the figure? Easy A. Uh, the proportions. Well, you can read the whole um, article, but if you have any questions about things you're confused about, then I'd be happy to answer those. Right here. So it would just be less heads. So the minimum I would say is probably three if you had like a brand newborn kid. But four, as you can see, makes a pretty reasonable toddler. And then one, two, three, four, five for a child under 10. Well, actually they're saying five-year-old. So three-year-old, I don't know. I guess so. Yeah, like this would be a very young child. This would be like a full-on baby. And then this would be like a child under 10 around 10, pre-puberty, and then past puberty, and then full adulthood. Okay. okay. But like I was saying, there's no one system. You just have to figure out something that works for you. Um, just for a quick aside then, when I'm drawing figures, um, I have a few things that I rely upon for uh, a sort of structure. Uh, besides the major masses, which we're going to talk about in just a moment here. The major masses are basically these that I just drew. okay, And they don't have to be three-dimensional. In fact, they shouldn't be three-dimensional uh, because they're just placing on the page and the basic shape and size. Um, I probably drew this one a bit uncomfortably large because it encompasses both the cranium and the jaw at the same time. So it ends up looking like a big, goofy um, like mascot head when you draw it like that. But really, that's kind of the shape that we're talking about there. Um, the head mass shape is basically like half of the big rib cage shape. I'm kind of fighting my nature drawing these because these are not lining up to ribs, pelvis, cranium, that sort of thing. They're just sort of a more general placement to get your basic proportions and I don't usually draw them anymore and so it's a little uncomfortable for me to draw them. Uh, but this one is usually two head units so if you were going to use that system we would say that there's about one head here and one head here, two head units long. Um, and it is slightly wider than a head also. I would say it's like one and a half heads wide. So if we took it and we sliced the head in half and moved it over here and here, we'd get this sort of thing. And now it looks like it's got giant ears, kind of that wide, okay? I'm gonna undo that because it's a little bit goofy. The hip area, which is just sort of a big box, um, is about as wide as that chest area, generally speaking, and it is about as tall as one head. Okay, so about like that. But there is a slight gap between the two of them, so be sure to observe that gap just a little bit. There's also a slight gap between the head mass and the torso mass, the rib cage mass as well. Um, so be sure to provide a little gap. How much is going to kind of depend on the angle so I don't even really bother measuring it because once the, the figure is bending, so for instance, if they're bending over and their head was down like this and their rib cage was overlapping along with most of their body and then their pelvis was down here somewhere, all of these things are now curled way, way over and we're not going to see those gaps anymore. You're just going to have to observe and feel it. Okay. So those are going to be the things that we're going to be using primarily this week, but I did want to touch on um, little extra bits such as where to place the shoulders. Uh, if you create a sort of angle like this from the center line, that's going to be the actual way that the clavicle moves, which can be really helpful because you can reorient this much higher up here, or you can leave it down here where the shoulder would naturally attach. But in general, for a more simplistic view, just kind of a straight line across the top of this is going to do it. Um, hovering out in space roughly equal to the width is where the shoulder is going to attach. Then your upper arm portion is going to be about as long as where you could imagine elbowing yourself in the ribs. So if I were to draw a rib cage in here, right, these tips of ribs are going to occur here and here. Okay, so this would be like 
an actual rib cage in here now. And you can see how much extra we're drawing in for this uh, primary thoracic mass. Okay, it's a lot. It's not real either, and it kind of sticks out stupidly. Like if you bend someone backwards, like way backwards, you have this big thoracic mass, and then their hips down here. And if you were to draw the person in, probably the the tip of their ribs would stop about there, and you'd have this huge amount of extra just kind of sticking out nowhere. Don't worry about that. Ultimately, we're going to stop using this. But for now, it's just going to be a helpful way to place and proportion our drawings. Okay, so this upper arm is going to be about as long as would intersect that. And you can think about it kind of sweeping out in an arc and across the body as well, that if you move your arm around, you're going to be able to touch kind of this rib and maybe about over there. I think I was a little bit too uh, not very generous about how I placed that, but somewhere about out there. So this would be the elbow. Uh, then down to wrist is going to just about reach the bottom of this mass down here, kind of. But now we're talking about like its own orbit. Um, you can treat it as roughly equal to the upper arm if you want to, so about the same length. You're not going to go wrong by doing that, but it's not exactly true. Uh, and then once you add on the hand and the fingers, you end up going down to about mid-thigh from that. So we'd have hip bones attaching here and here. Um, they don't attach here and here, by the way, not the bottoms of this. They attach right in the center. So hip bones about here and here. Legs kind of come in a bit and then step out and then come in a bit. I tend to draw the legs way too short when I'm just doing a diagram every single time because every cartoon character has much shorter legs. But this is going to basically go about mid-thigh, your fingers, if you relax your hands and you stand upright. And the wrist is kind of going to hit the hip bone area. So you can kind of see that. These are the kind of proportions I'm thinking about when I'm drawing the figure. So they are, where will one part be able to reach another part? Okay. The reason I use this kind of system is because I've trained to be uh, an animator. And I have to move the body around a lot. It has to be flexible. It has to reach. And so this system is really helpful for me. Because if I want to draw someone like, let's say, um, stretching their arm across their body with like a limp hand here, and this one is like tightening across the front here, and let's just say they're leaning their head back or something like that, so they're doing one of those like good arm stretches or something, I want to know where all the parts coincide. Like where does the elbow end up? Where can the wrist end up? Um, how far down the body will the elbow intersect? That's important for me as an animator. Um, whatever it is you choose to do, you might use a different system ultimately to help you with your goals, um, but everyone kind of comes up with a different one. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Um, what you want to do though is compare it against photographs to make sure that you're not completely off base. Like I'll tell you just at a glance, this diagram that I just drew, these legs are way too short. Way, way too short. They should be Something more like this and this would be more like a, a natural human being. I just have a, a bad habit of drawing them way too short because cartoon characters look cuter with shorter legs. And that's what I mostly draw. But see how when I lengthen those legs out, immediately it feels a little bit more comfortable. We could also grab parts of the figure that I sketched. So let's just grab this whole head here just copy paste and then see how many heads high my diagram is just to see how close am I naturally so there's three four five six seven so I've only just barely hit seven which I kind of know about myself I tend to shorten things up so I have to resist by drawing much longer when we're dealing with photographic people okay so I'm saying don't do this like this isn't like completely correct it's just what I'm demonstrating off the cuff for you guys right now yeah why did what oh why did I do the lightning bolt I mean, uh, I mean, like that yeah um 
Technically speaking, the legs don't do this exactly, but there are rhythms in the muscles and the ways that the muscles stretch out that look kind of like that. Also, Steve taught me to do that because it was something that he was trying to impress upon us, the way that there's a rhythm in the body. Um, I also tend to do this for the, um, for the upper arm. I tend to go out and then back down in two different curves. So an outward curve and an inward curve. And that's again for rhythm purposes, as in making it look pretty. Actually, maybe I do the, do I do the opposite? So if I had an arm stretched out, no, that's correct. Yeah, that's that's normally the way that I do it. I will have like an upward curve for the hand sometimes, an overhand curve for the forearm, underhand for the um, upper arm. So this would be a person like almost pointing straight forward with like an outstretched hand. Mm, don't worry about it too much. How about that for now? <laughs> yeah. A bad habit of drawing legs? <laughs> Like drawing them as like sticks, like this, yeah. or like that. Yeah. Well, nothing wrong with that as long as you've got the knee in the right place, the hip in the right place, and the ankle in the right place, because that could be the important first step to making it look believable. Wow. Like, like initially, much of figure drawing is just where do I see it uh, here? Which direction is it going? That direction, and it stops here. Just connecting the dots can be a really big part of the early figure drawing process. Which is kind of why we were doing that for the cylinders, because as we saw last week, if I draw something like that, and this is hip and knee, right? Then I could say, and this is how far away from me it's turned, and it gets this much thinner by the time it gets out there. And so now I've got a nice little understructure for a more three-dimensional meaty piece of anatomy. Yeah? yeah? Okay. Cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at the major masses then. Where's my browser? There it is. Okay. So then the three major masses. Here are examples of what I'm talking about. We're talking about the head, basically the whole thing, the rib cage kind of structure simplified is what that is and then the boxy shape that makes up the pelvis area and we've got these diagrams down on the right hand side if you can place those with an appropriate size and distance from each other then you've done a lot of the hard work of drawing a figure relatively realistically already okay which is why we're going to do this first you can kind of see superimposed over this some of my personal measurements and proportions. I did double check this one to make sure it was of the correct height of about seven and a half, which is fine. Um, and I'm indicating some important defaults here, as in like the lean of the body. Um, are you guys aware that your back has a backward bend most of the time and that your neck is coming forward from your shoulders, not straight up? Some of you, but maybe not all of you, because when people draw, okay, if they just draw a stick figure, you tend to see them draw, okay, here's here's the rib cage, right? And then here's a neck, and then here's a head, right? So what's wrong there? He's got some amazing hot It's just incredible, right? It's like there's a, a fishing line attached to the top here and he's just being yanked straight up and that's not at all how people are right the rib cage is going to lean back at least a little bit okay if you are female it's probably going to lean back a bit more and if you're male it's probably going to lean back just a bit less but they're both going to lean back okay the reason for that is uh, female spines are more flexible male spines are less flexible okay so slightly greater and usually curvier bend in the spine for females slightly boxier and less extreme bend for males okay so that's number one uh, what else how's, how's my head doing it's about half the size of this thoracic mass right 
Yeah? Does it look weird? Why does it look weird? Does it look like it's like a lollipop? Good. That's one thing. Um, do you know what the place where that connection is called? For extra credit? So you're... The base of the skull. Uh-huh. You're right. Um, crap, now I'm blanking on it. Uh, it starts with an M. Uh, crap, now I'm not going to remember. Anyway, you're right. So that connection point is back here. So if this is a side view, right, of a, of a head, then that connection point is way back here. And I've drawn it kind of like coming up here way too much in the middle. And so you got to scoot that back a bit. It's also curved in general. Okay, so the total neck mass is going to be something like this, where that connection point is pretty far back, actually. There's some tendons here that smooth out that transition. If I don't include the tendons, it looks a bit weird, like there's this big kind of stair step in the back of your head. Technically there is one. Yeah, technically there is one, but there are some muscles that smooth out this transition a bit into something more like this, okay? Generally, we're not gonna care too much about the silhouette, but there you are. Also from the chin, there is flesh, sometimes fat, that softens out this transition as well. But this tubular shape, right, goes up into the head like that. Okay, it also attaches to the top of the shoulders at about this kind of angle. Okay, so if we've got the leaning thoracic shape like that, then it's attaching kind of into a front plane that we're going to have to chop off eventually, but sort of like this. Okay, the ribs will also slice off in this direction and end far sooner than actually is indicated by this mass, but the general bend is in this direction. So we've got this way for the neck, although the head can be straight up and down, and probably should be straight up and down, right? So this way for the neck, this way for the torso, and then again it's going to be roughly equal to the neck for the bend back in the hips. So it'll go something like this. Okay. Alright, so what's wrong here, right, is that it should be coming out of this part, not the very top of this thing and it needs to be leaned a bit in this direction. So to do it right uh, over here, let's uh, give this one just a slight bend in this direction. Then I can draw my relatively goofy kind of looking mass. Don't want to lean it too much. There we go. Just kind of straight up and down. But it, it ends up looking like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, bad posture at first, but we'll end up making it a lot more structural eventually. Also, I just, I just hate drawing it. <laughs> All right, I'll give it a little jaw to make myself happy. There. Okay, uh, female one, same thing, although the neck bend should not increase more, that would be a bit odd. Um, try to keep it relatively upright, but a slight bend. And you can definitely keep the head fairly even. Okay, kind of like that. I'm probably exaggerating it too much for the sake of example, but you get it. And then hips. This one, if I were to draw, if I were to complete it, straight up and down box, right? It looks so goofy and unnatural, right? For this one, we're going to have a curvier sweeping shape for the female and a boxier shape for the male. So I'll lean it back just a little bit, kind of like that. Probably could stand to be, yeah, that's, that's pretty much fine. And then for this one, probably just a little bit more. Something like that. Okay, so do this, do this, don't do this. Right? And then structurally, eventually, we're going to evolve towards this thing over here, which is a lot more close to realism. Maria's disconnected. Oh no. You look like you're still here. That was probably a while ago. All right, let's take a look at the article again. All right, so can you guys see in these examples how I've located 
those pieces. And these are just a few examples from quick poses, which we're going to end up using for most of our anatomy, uh, most of our anatomy poses. Uh, if I haven't talked about it before, quick poses is a really, really easy place to get um, just random photographs. Uh, they are naked a lot of the time, and when I'm streaming to YouTube, I'm going to at least turn on clothes and costumes for that part, even though I have some superimposed naked people over here. This should be fine. Uh, but if I start grabbing random poses for a recording, then I don't want that to happen. Uh, but generally, I would recommend that you just do all. So if they have clothes, that's fine. If they don't have clothes, that's fine. If you are looking to study anatomy specifically, do the nude and partially nude ones. You don't want clothes in the way for that stuff. Okay, but if I um, take a look at these settings, the type can be specifically face, hands, feet, animals, landscape, or urban. We're going to want pose most of the time. Okay, gender, just do both genders, no reason not to. And then clothing, I already talked about. Show the image upside down is an interesting one. I just recommend no in general, but if you find yourself having a lot of trouble with proportion, draw upside down and see if that helps you. Okay, it tends to make it uh, less familiar, and so you tend to just look at what's on screen. So if I hit start then, we get poses. I didn't set it to any timing, so this will stay up as long as I want, and I can hit next. You can also change the background to light or dark if you prefer. I would prefer dark probably. Um, and so we would try to draw from these pictures. If you are drawing on the computer, then you can download these. If you are drawing on paper, you're going to have to just look at your monitor and draw. Okay, So this pose right here, we're going to use that one, but I'm going to show you just a few more. Cool, kind of seated guy. A lot of costume in the way, see? It would be really hard to see the, the primary pieces. This one, it's a little easier to see what her hip is doing, but still not as clear as like a leotard or a nude or something. That one, freaking impossible. You can't see anything that's going on at all. Crushed velvet does not shape very well. Okay. So once we're done looking at these, right, we say stop session. On this screen, you have access to all of the images that you saw during that session. So you can download them, right? So you can click on them. Here it is. Uh, and then I should be able to just, yes, yeah, save image as. And here I go. I'm going to put it on my desktop over here. Let me save it as something other than alphanumeric things. We'll say ballet. Okay. And so now I can drag it from my desktop directly into Photoshop. There we go. So we can use it as an example. Okay. So if you guys are draw drawing digitally, this is fine. But I do want you to try to draw out in blank space, not directly over the figure. Okay, And then, of course, those of you using paper, you don't even have that ability, so don't worry about it. Okay, You guys understand? Okay, So I'm going to turn off this layer and use a blank layer. And so we've got this um, ballerina here on my screen. You guys can all see that, right? I switched all the stuff correctly? Yep. Okay. All right, so I'm going to try to draw those three major masses based on just looking at this person. Um, I do have a, a white, there we go. I do have a white pencil as well, so I can draw over the top of the figure here. But uh, So I'm going to take a look and say, OK, so here's her head. And it's going at kind of this angle, right? There's her head. And I'm just going to make an oval for the entire thing, right? So that would be all the way down to the chin all the way back in the, the back of the head, the everything. So it's not very detailed. Uh, but I see it coming at kind of this angle. Then her upper body, I see it kind of bend back in this direction so that torso is kind of coming back at this angle. It's got to be roughly twice the size, but as we look at her, like there's a leg over here and then dragons? What's going on under here? We kind of have to guess, OK? Can you guys tell which leg is which? The top one's her, uh, left. This is her knee. Her knee is facing towards us. Okay, so that means it's disappearing in here like this, like a socket, which means that her hips are going like this. But with clothing on, that was kind of hard to determine, wasn't it? 
right? That's why I recommend drawing nudes, and it's why when we study anatomy, we almost always draw naked people first. I can tell you from experience of just watching people deform, this is one of her butt cheeks right here. The other one is up here. And that is really, really freaking weird, but she's flexible and she's dancing, okay? So that's why the angle is like this. Her torso is doing that, and then her neck is coming forward a little bit, and her head is doing this after that, okay? So I'm gonna try to draw the torso shape almost ends up being vertical, but I'm gonna exaggerate it a little bit this direction. And then that box, man, if I hadn't observed it, I wouldn't believe it, but that box is doing this. Okay, so you can see that two of these at least are overlapping now. That'll happen a lot. The more bend in the body, the more twist, the more overlap you'll get. But this is a really freaking weird kind of deformation, especially if we hadn't like just worked it out together. One of the hip bones is up here. The other hip bone is back there somewhere, kind of going around the corner. But then we've got a leg down here, and we've got a leg going kind of this direction with a foot somewhere roughly out like that. Um, we've got shoulders, and we've got arms coming down kind of like this direction. This hand has to end at about ankle, somewhere around there. So we'll say it's going to be something like that. And then she's got like some of the fabric which is doing something like that. So that would be kind of an example of like a basic gesture done with these major masses. Okay, I've got basic knee placements, although I can't really see this one unfortunately. Basic limb placements, kind of the angle of shoulders and hips, and then where those major three major masses are going at least although they are doing some really crazy stuff in this one. Okay. Any questions about that? Does that seem fairly clear except for the fact that I picked a difficult pose? Is this how you want us to do the homework? You don't have to do any of the limb stuff. You don't have to do any of that. Okay? okay. You only got to do those three and I would also want some sort of gesture line that kind of connects them. It's almost always a good idea. But when I do include all those limbs, you can see the structure of the entire drawing kind of taking shape, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you want to, I kind of feel like it's, it's really barren without it. I would really feel remiss not putting a shoulder line in, not at least doing something with hands and, and legs. And it doesn't have to be any more detailed than this. Like my foot is just this big blobby shape. My hand is just a triangle. Don't spend any time on that stuff. Okay. Okay. And um, are we going to go more into the, the gesture ones? Eventually. The thing about gesture is that it is fluid, bendy, interpretive. That's not very analytical and it's not good for beginners. So a gesture is a really great thing to do. It's excellent for loosening up your figure, uh, making better, more dynamic, more energy filled poses. And I love doing gesture drawings, but what we really should be doing is drawing more statue, stiff, robotic people for a while first. Okay, thank you. Make sense? Okay. So back here, we do have the rest of these poses here. I could probably do this one too. Why don't we take a crack at that one? So I'm going to save, not save link. There it is. Right click right in the middle, save image as. And then over on my other screen, ah, I don't need to rename it. It'll just be sitting there. Bring up Photoshop and drag that image over. So we'll place her right over here. You know what? I'll just move this one. There we go. Just move that down there draw on the same layer. So same sort of thing happening here. We want to look and analyze what's going on and if possible draw it the same size just because that's going to be a little bit nicer. Uh, so we've got her head tilting to the left. Oh, there we go. Got her head tilting to the left like that and I want to put that back down. Sorry, little structural problems. About this big or so. Okay. Her 
torso is definitely going the other direction and it's pretty lined up although I feel like I, there is a slight bend overall like this slight bend like that so I'm gonna have a head a torso kind of like this and then the boxy shape of the hips is always a little tougher but I think that hmm I think it's just like this this time it's it's almost lined up so it's doing twistier things in three dimensions but we don't have to represent that in this so something about like that is what I'm seeing okay and by twistier things I mean that this hip is very far back this hip is more far forward there's a sort of twist in the body three-dimensionally but we're not really representing that yet okay so something like this if it makes you feel better also you guys can put a small jawline wherever that person is looking just because it makes it feel a little bit better but an oval is all that's really required for this okay. if we we're going to do the rest of it I would say we've got one high shoulder one lower shoulder so sort of like this we've got a fairly straight arm coming back with an extended hand that phaser right elbow about here bent arm backward bent arm hip extending from this side coming just about to where the hips are but then very very high platform shoes like that and then this back leg coming almost straight down back and raised significantly because of that shoe so something like this and then I'd start double checking like all the levels of things and where they're lining up it looks like I made that um, arm far too long so I'd scoot that over here and say your hand is gonna end up right about here instead and then I'm gonna relax the arm just a little bit more like this that'd be about right for this one as right as needs to be okay Any questions? Ah, I have it colored for clarity, but you don't have to do that. Now, if you want to do that, go ahead, but they're different enough shapes that I think it's pretty clear most of the time which is which. If it is not clear which is which without the color, you've done something wrong. Cool. Uh, one thing I did want to point out is I intentionally picked a muscular guy for one of these because of how much extra mass there is added on from that primary shape. You see how small this looks in comparison to his upper body? Keep that in mind. Okay, If the person is fat or if the person is muscular, that primary shape is buried underneath there. Whereas if you have a waif-thin woman like this, that primary shape is basically touching the surface of the skin where her ribs are and almost touching right where the um, neck meets the shoulders. Okay, Some parts of the body stick out more, some parts stick out less, and it's it can be difficult to ascertain where the um, shapes are. Uh, we are going to go over full landmarks at some point in the future, but for right now we're just kind of visually two-dimensionally taking a guess I will point out that hip bones are a really good indication usually and other than that geez for these masses I mean there's the tips of the ribs are like here and here for this girl but that's not really gonna help us here the center pit of the neck is another one there just aren't very many landmarks that are gonna help with these primary shapes right now but once we start moving on to slightly more complex ones we'll have to go over the full list and make sure that you guys are aware of all of them so like on her almost none of them are visible because she's facing the wrong way but there is one for like the collarbone um, arm attachment which is right there um, geez we don't even see like the center crease of the back for her like she's got scapula back here but it's shaded uh, because of her hair and dress we can see where knees are there's a knee we can see where elbows are there's elbows I can't even see where this knee is so she's got very few landmarks showing maybe ankles I guess ankles count yeah I mean lucky thing we can see the outline of her face 
Uh, hair is another thing. Don't be fooled by large hair. Um, the shape of this mass for her is really only about here, but large hair sometimes makes it look like the head should extend down, so don't be fooled by that either. Uh, in the case of this girl right here, um, her skull is literally hugging that line. It's not really much larger than that. Okay. Cool. I do have detailed um, write-ups of each one of the three, which you should probably read through, uh, but that's the gist of it. Do we have a question? I thought I heard somebody. You don't need to, but if you don't, then I'm not going to be able to say whether or not something that looks weird is weird for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. okay. It should be pretty understandable. Like, if you don't have this reference picture, does this look like a wacky way out there human pose? Not really, right? And so it should be pretty understandable that that's a, a close enough human. But what about that one? I guess now that I've included the limbs, well, I mean, now that I've included the limbs, it's not so weird, but it could be really weird, really misleading. So in the homework details, um, I say that if you want to include your reference, then you can, but if you don't want to, then you don't have to. So if you want to place your drawing side by side with the original photos, that would be helpful. If not, please include a folder of the images that you used. That would be probably the bare minimum. Um, you can turn your drawings in, either in as one large document in a gallery or as many different images all paired up or not paired up. It doesn't matter to me. Just label everything correctly. Okay. If it were me, here's what I would do. I would set these settings, say start, and then I would go through and pay attention to the poses I get but not draw them. Okay. So I'd look, can I use this one for this assignment? Kinda. Next. Can I use that one? Definitely. Next, so that would be one. Can I use that? No. No. Yes. Two. No. No. Mm, I probably could, but it's boring. So yes, I can use that one. Three. Uh, four. Five. Yes, six. Yes, seven. Yes, eight. Mm, probably not. Man, I really like that though. Sure, nine and then 10. Okay, so I've got them and I say stop session and then I would just download all the ones that I liked. Okay, that way I've got them permanently. I'm not gonna lose them. They're just on my desktop or something like that and I can throw them into a folder or I can put them into Photoshop or whatever I want. So that's what I would recommend. Oh, I'm sorry. I just said 10 tonight. It's 12. Or sorry, 20. <laughs> I'm getting confused with my other class. 20. So 20 different people. Using 20 photographs, locate and draw the three major masses and the line of action. OK. Cool. 20. Um, don't spend a whole lot of time on each one, by the way. Okay, Spend enough time to double check and make sure that you're making careful choices. But beyond that, just pick one and move on. Let's try um, this one. Yeah, because that's, that's fairly clear. And I'm going to save that one to my desktop and open in Photoshop. If if you want them to if you want them to be that's convenient, like if you can draw them going down a big list or across a few rows, that's perfectly fine with me. Okay, okay. so here we've got this lady, but you can see how messy it'll get. Like if you just use one layer. <laughs> uh, so here we've got this lady here. What I should be doing is thinking about what angle and what size and how far apart. Just those things, right? what angle, what size, how far apart, and double checking. So let's say I draw her head like this, 
and I draw her torso like this. Something wrong here? Okay, so then I should double check, right? I should say, well, here's what I see. Okay, and now what do I do? If I'm working digitally, I can just drag it over the top, right? Or I could draw horizontal lines. If I can draw perfect horizontal lines or just use a tool to check things like that. But look at this, Th that looks accurate. These are diverging, these lines that I just drew. They're getting bigger. Also, I just drew way, way too big, right? It's supposed to be more like this with a little bit of extra. Okay, So my correction then would have to be something like, no, actually it's like this big and there's a little bit of her jaw. Okay, Then I'm going to erase not that. Let me turn this down just a bit. Erase that away. Okay, And then I'm probably going to have caused another problem because I did change that shape and size, but how about how far away this is from the rib cage? Well, this, right, it ends up right about there. Here, here are the two notches in the ribs, by the way, right there and right there. Um, so this is going way out here. And this is correct because the lower part of this just doesn't exist. I drew this one way too small. Yeah, they turned on big head mode. So now I've got to correct that. So I'm going to try to draw this a little bit bigger. And I'm going to try to also draw it further forward than I think is appropriate because the front part of that is not really going to be a part of the figure. Something like that, maybe. Okay, erase away. Okay. Looks a little too big now. So I'm, I'm looking back and forth like at this angle, at this length, right? And I'm thinking like it's a little bit too fat now. So it'd be more like that. There we go. I don't know. I have a very soft eraser on. I wish I have a harder eraser. I like that. So I've got a pretty good angle. I don't really like the angle that I drew this face at. Be a little bit further upright. Okay. And now hips too wide. Right. Should really end right about there. So I was intentionally doing some mistakes and errors that needed correction to show you what that process might be like. Take an early stab at it, you know, get your arm moving, try to make a few decisions. This gesture line is kind of like this too, I think, sort of S shape. Um, we may talk about this later, or maybe I listed it already, but your gesture, try to make it a C, an I, or an S, and not any more complicated than that. So either a straight gesture line, a complete bend or one reversal of a bend. Okay, um, so I tried to put in a few things that needed correcting in there just to kind of give you an idea of what I might do to get closer to the right proportions. At this point, even if it's not 100% accurate, it's close enough and I should pretty much just move on to the next one. So five minutes tops, more like two minutes or so. Okay. Am I saying a, a crazy number to some of you? Holy shit, five minutes, what are you talking about? You're crazy? No? Yeah. And they really are. And they're two dimensional shapes, by the way. So this is not a box yet. Okay. So we don't have to say, here's the. Here's the front portion, here's the back portion, here's the opposite side, here's the angle, right? We're not doing that yet, okay? It's just a big envelope, okay? Same thing with the rib cage. We're going to locate the suprasternal notch or the place where the archway of the ribs coincides to find the center line. That center line would wrap around this direction centered here. We're not doing that yet. Okay. And we're going to use slightly different volumes when we do that anyway, which are actually anchored to positions in the body that are visible. Cool. 
There is the homework folder for it. Um, here is the homework number two. Did anyone want me to look at their uh, homework two for sure right now? Yes. Okay. Who said yes? Um, okay, give me a name because that's not helpful. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, um, oh, there you are. Okay. Uh, when you take a picture, try to get the paper completely straight and flat because now it's distorting and it's hard for me to tell exactly what's going on. Okay. Uh, your lines are all going in different directions and so I don't see any perspective effect. Let me download it and, t and show you what I mean. So I'm going to just turn off all my other layers. There we go, bring that down like that. OK. So let's take this one to start off with, number two. Okay. Go back to the right layer. So you've got this angle and this angle. Is there supposed to be some convergence here or no? Should they be? going away from us and getting closer together, or are they not supposed to be going away from us and getting closer together? Um, not really close together. Say what now? Um, like, should they be completely the same angle or no? No. No. So where are they, where are they getting closer together? Which direction? This way or this way? Up or down? They're getting closer together up. Okay, that would mean that they would need to be drawn like this. No. Well, and also why? Why up? Because we're looking at this, right? The top of the box. Yeah. So it's close. That means the bottom of the box down here is far. Far equals small. Okay, so far equals small, that means these two need to be getting closer together, not the top two. Whoa, whoa, you just had an ex existential realization there. I heard it, I heard it happen live. Okay, so it just means that these two lines, right, need to be getting closer together somehow. So the distance between the top two corners and the distance between the bottom two corners, this one needs to be smaller because it's farther. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. So we have to keep that in mind for all of these different pieces. This is the side that's close to us, so it's the big side. This is the side that's far away from us, so it's the small side. So that means all of those different angles should get smaller over there too. So let's try that. I've got this angle now, and then I've got this one. Well, we've got the same problem as before. This one should also be heading towards the same point all these other ones are. So if I draw a line back somewhere, it'd be more like this angle heading down here somewhere. Okay, but is it smaller? Yeah, it's smaller. It's just heading towards the wrong point somewhere very far away. So somewhere like that instead, so not this. And this one, okay, over on the left, if we go back there, is it smaller? Yeah, it's smaller. And actually, it's heading roughly in the right direction, too. So you have one, two, this one needs to head more in, this one needs to lean more in also. And we start to get the 3D effect back. But it's also really deep. See how deep that box is? It's not really so much a box as a rectangle. We can make a pretty nice looking rectangle. Um, so let me connect this line like that. So this is where the new corner has to be. I'm going to get relatively the same line with this one. But if I draw across, this is that back corner. So now I'll draw a new vertical here. 
Okay, and erase out. Is that how small my eraser is? Okay. And I'll erase out some of these extraneous lines so we're not focusing on them so much. Okay. Uh, this one, woo, and this one, they're kind of coming together in a really, really big way. So that would mean this one would need to come together in the same kind of way. So we're ending up with something like that. It's it's just a little bit wobbly, is the thing. So like if I turn this off, we're like, I'm getting closer to a box, but I'm still not there, right? So this one, this line right here, is a little too bent to kind of be believable. See how it's not really following this line or this line down here? It's just kind of off at a different one. So if you draw your lines on any box, they should either fan out like that, right? Or be completely parallel in whatever direction we're heading, if you can keep track of that. They should never be one like this, one like this, one like that, right? Or at a completely different angle if they're all supposed to be heading the same direction. So you gotta keep that consistent, okay? But with that said, the boxes are one of the hardest ones, right? Because there's a lot of angles to keep track of. I think the cylinders by comparison are far easier. Is this your only homework file? Uh, there's, there's more. Okay, that was the only one I saw in the turn-in. See? Up. Up. Oh, okay. One time you put your last name first. The rest of the times you put your first name last. So oh, no. just keep it consistent. see okay this is actually fairly accurate number 10 it's just very very exaggerated uh, number nine is looking pretty good be careful about the angle that you draw things eight looks pretty accurate seven looks a little bit lumpy to me uh, these are the cylinders right yeah. they're not bad yeah they're not bad they're doing they're doing okay stuff you're not filling in the other um, axis on the on the ellipses so you've got the one that runs down the cylinder but you're not filling in the major axis which is the one that's perpendicular be sure to put that one in it's on seven but I don't see it on any of the others except for these flat ones and that's the one I was looking at okay cool do you have any th any other questions You want me to do a box from scratch? Yeah. Okay. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. <clears throat> so to do a box from scratch, usually I will just start with one of the faces. It's going to be whatever the most obvious one is, just from me looking at it. So I'm going to go like this, and just say, this is the face I'm going to start with. Okay. Any kind of diamond shape is normally going to be fine if you can imagine which direction it's going. I could right now turn this into a box that goes this way somewhere, or I could turn it into a box that goes this way somewhere. It's all just kind of about how I'm seeing it. And there's probably even more options that I'm not thinking about, okay? So I see this face, I see these angles somehow, and I'm just gonna say, this is the direction I want my box to go in, that way, okay? So I start drawing all these rays. Now notice something, all of mine are completely parallel. You should probably stick to that first. Just do parallel lines. They don't need to converge. They don't need to get smaller. The effect of diminishing perspective on a figure is usually pretty minimal, except when you come to the limbs, okay? So here I've got my lines, they're completely parallel. These ones are parallel too which means I need the last one over here somewhere that ends this box. Here, or here, or somewhere, but I'm gonna to try to use my um, estimation to place it in a place that makes sense. Something like here, probably, to try to get the same kind of proportions. If I feel that I've done something wrong already, then I can correct things. So like I could bring this side in a little bit more, because it looked a little bit too long in that direction. It looked like it needed to be shortened a bit. So now I've got this point. 
uh, then since all of these lines are heading off in the same direction, right? I just need to extend that one out and erase out the ones that I'm no longer using. Like these. I like to only erase them partially sometimes so I can see which directions I've been moving in terms of my decision making, especially early on. And so there's only one line left. Well, I've got a corner already there. And I've got lines that are parallel. I just need a parallel line that skewers that corner and it locates this last corner. And so now I'm good. Okay. If I take a look at that and there's something wrong with it, once I've done all this, then I can move those lines around and adjust accordingly. So for instance, if I think this entire thing is too long in this direction or not, not long enough, then I can draw a new edge here and extend out new walls for it and build the rest of it back in. Or I could keep those lines going further and draw a new division and extend new walls down and figure out all the rest. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay, the more square the face is on the box that you're looking at, the more we are looking directly at it. Okay, if it's completely square, we're just staring directly at that side. Um, the more it has to bend off to one side, the less square it can be. So if I drew it like this, we're still looking directly at it because it's a square. So now I've got to start angling those other lines in a different direction, like up here a little bit. Right, keep all the lines parallel still, but this one, because I've had to bend those lines over a little bit, now we're looking at this as a slightly sheared angle. Okay, and if I keep compressing these angles more to like this, then we're very, very much at an extreme angle for this face. Okay, we're hardly looking at it at all anymore. And the other sides are going to be more square by comparison. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Okay, so just keep that in mind. It means that if you're looking at a figure, for instance, let's look at some of those I've got saved. So if we're looking at a figure like this one, we're looking directly at the front of her pelvis, right? Pretty close to it. It's going to be fairly square but we're not looking at the side of her pelvis. It's going to be very squished. It's going to be sheared. Okay? That's what is going to help. Or like this luggage. We're looking right at the side of this luggage. But you can see this little bit over here is very skewed because we're looking at a very sheared angle on this part of the luggage. Okay? Okay. Uh, who else would like me to look at their stuff? Me. Maria. Maria. Cool. Those look pretty accurate to me. Slight bit of sharpening at the touch points. So try to keep it round, but you're doing it right. I can even see it in these, right? So this is the one where it absolutely shouldn't happen because it's a nice steady place to practice. So get it nice and smooth and round as it turns around and hits those points. But you're doing pretty good. I can see you're aware of it because you're resisting it. In fact, this one, you nailed it, right? See that diagonal ellipse? That one is nice and round. Okay. It looks like they're all located pretty correctly. The only thing that concerns me is that I see a light vertical and horizontal line in all of them, no matter what direction the ellipses are going. Was that just to locate the center or something? Yeah. Okay. Are you also drawing the major and minor axes lines of those ellipses somehow? And I'm just not seeing it. No. You should. <laughs> That's the ones you should be drawing. Because I don't think you need the two lines that you have drawn for a circle to find the middle of a circle. I think you can probably find a circle without them or the center without them. So here's a circle. I think you can pretty much just, there it is, right? But what those lines are for is tilt, right? If the line is going this way, it's saying, I see a wrapping line and it is tilted over here and it is this fat, 
right? Because that's the part and that's the part where it's hitting the sides. And so I needed this line to help me draw that ellipse. Does that make sense? Okay. You don't always need to draw this one because that one's usually just kind of a, an estimate of this is how fat I, I see it. But you do need the major axis, the one that slices the, the sphere. Okay. Then the next one is almost always going to be at a perp perpendicular angle to that first one, two dimensionally, I mean. Um, and then you can locate like, okay, and I see it bending slightly, ooh, slightly to the right. There's my three dimensional arrow coming out the surface right here. Okay. But this other major axis is going to be at a two dimensional right angle to the first um, belt line. And those are usually the only ones we need. Um, so one of yours, I saw this one we got a gimbal lock problem in 3D is that those are not um, those are not aligned to your axes and this one for some reason is bending at a really weird angle. Um, I don't think you ever did it anywhere else. Yeah, all the rest of them are fine. Just that one. I don't so I don't know what happened there. Probably. Yeah. It's usually like I think maybe when you're drawing pure spheres, it's a little bit more confusing. Because you're like, what does any of this crap matter? But when you're drawing a head, it will matter because one will be like the nose and one will be the ears. So it's like if I see a nose, uh, I don't know, up here somewhere, right? Then it'll be like, okay, I see this kind of tilt. Let me get over there a little bit closer, a lot closer. And I saw this kind of wrapping line. And like this is the front and it goes through that nose and oh by the way I also saw it with this side because I've got to locate that nose over here the reason that's gonna matter is because now this is the place where we're gonna line up the mouth and the center of the eyes somewhere right the eyes could probably go I don't know slightly above this line or if it's a cartoon character right on the line or something but suddenly it really matters and also the ear one is absent so it's like if we know we've got to put here's on somewhere, now we need that third one, which is probably going to come somewhere around here. And then we can finally like attach ears here and here somewhere around the back. Okay. So when we're just drawing like a pure sphere. It's, it's a lot more confusing, I feel. But once you've got like a nose to stick on the front of the thing or eyeballs to locate, then I think it's a bit easier to understand. Okay. Were there more? Yeah, that's pretty good. I don't see any major problems with that. Yep. Yep, those look good. The only one I'll say is that once you start getting a very um, isometric angle like this, the 3D effect starts to flatten out and look kind of weird, which is why we then start making things farther away smaller. But when you're doing any of these other angles, it doesn't really matter. Like your parallel lines, they're fine. Oh, this is not yours. This is someone else's. Cool. Any questions? Okay. Yeah, it's just it's just you know getting comfortable with the the pencil and your hand movement. That's all. And it's very easy to mess up. Like you're probably seeing every time I do an example, I will first draw like whoops and then fix it <laughs> like that'll happen a lot or because I'm trying to counteract it I do the opposite sometimes and it goes wild it goes far too far and then I have to shave it down to a sharper more precise point and get rid of this extra because I was trying to fight that impulse to make a you know edge either one happens Lydia wants me to look okay What's your last name? Oh no, there it is. It's a little hard to see, but generally looking all right. Let's see. The card moving is pretty cool. And I like this one too. Let's see. The spheres are probably the weakest one right now. Q 
cubes are okay, cylinders are okay, although this one I can't tell which way it's coming or going. Um, the spheres are the wacky one, and also I don't know what's going on here, like this, these crazy patterns all over these spheres for some reason. <laughs> and I don't know what you were what you were doing that for. Hey, stop it. Um, so, yeah, like this one, I have no idea what any of those lines inside of that are. This one, I know what you were attempting, but you don't have a good enough grasp of three-dimensional structure yet to do that. Uh, you were trying to make a Pac-Man, a three-dimensional Pac-Man, but you don't have a, a good enough idea yet. Um, this one, I have no idea. Like, I see basically something round and a center and a line, but then what's this line doing? It's just kind of cutting it, whereas the whole point of this line, the one that I drew through, is supposed to be to find the place where it intersects the sides of the circle so that I know if I draw an ellipse, it's got to touch those points. It's got to touch here, and it's got to touch there to, to be bisecting that sphere. Did you get that that's what the point of those lines was, that if I draw a thin one, it still has to touch those points. Draw a really thin one, it's got to touch those points. Or if I draw a really fat one, it's still got to touch those points and be centered on that line. While I'm doing that, um, there we are. I'm trying to remember your last name real fast. Cool. Uh, this guy got a little distorted. And this guy got just a bit bendy. I like this one. This guy got a little bit bendy too. This one's cool. I can't see the wrapping line in the middle. Are, is it? Is this the inside of an elbow? Are they both coming towards us? But they're cylinders, right? Are they both are both cylinders coming towards us? Or are they both tapered to be smaller at the joint? Okay. Then okay, if that's the case, then why can we see into both sides? <laughs> I didn't know that's what we were doing. Um that's why I had to ask, because I couldn't tell. So if if they if this is the inside of an elbow we could see into both sides, so that would be fine. But if they're both tapered, then we couldn't. And I guess we'd have to not have that? It's totally the inside of an elbow. Yeah. So it is. And, and it's like, it's flipping my brain in knots to even think about this. I feel like rather than talk about it, I would have to draw it and see if I can draw it. Which one am I drawing? The elbow? Okay, so if if we were sane, the elbow would go somewhere like this, right? Sideways to us, and we wouldn't worry about looking at it from the extreme angle. I don't know what's going on here. Well, let's just assume it's a round bend. So we'd get something like this. But now we're going to look, and you're, the one that you drew is like this one, this halfway one. Okay, and now we're going to look in there. Oh, God, okay. Um... I think I would I would start by making some kind of ellipse right in the center of the two and then give some directional bend either up or down to both sides. And I think would that is this going to work? Go back that way. So if I wasn't doing this weird bend thing, I would need something like this. And over on this side. Uh I'm doing something. It looks roughly correct. I don't know if I can put into words what I'm doing. So hopefully if I just draw it good, then that'll help somehow. Is this helping? <laughs> I have no idea. And then this one, we sh should be able to see into it. Did that, did that do anything? that help somehow? Yes, you made an elbow. Did it help you understand how to draw an elbow somehow? It's kind of a little spacey. 
Yeah. Yes. Also, this one looks really squishy for some reason. Now that I'm looking at it, um, probably needs to be wider. Good. I'm I'm glad that helped somehow because I have, I don't know how to put into words what this was <laughs> just now. Only that I did the thing. Yay. Yeah. Um, this box made me confused. No, it's not awful. It's just if we were looking at the inside of the box instead of the outside. If that was the bottom floor and this is the back floor, and then it's perfect. I, it's also the angles somewhat because the top bit, this bit, is small, but the way you've drawn it, it would be the front, so it would have to be big. And if I were to extrapolate the back here, it would be larger, so it is closer, which is why I'm seeing it as like the inside. It is flipping my brain inside out, though, to look at it. <laughs> this happens a lot though like you'll be drawing something and suddenly it will flip inside out and it'll be hard to um, keep yourself focused on the way that you saw it originally um, just watch your angles every now and then you've got kind of a bendy angle that kind of breaks the illusion a little bit you should be a little bit more careful about what direction they go uh, and draw the major axis I don't see any major axes only minor ones okay so this one is the one that suffers from it Right, because the major axis that you imagined is vertical, but it actually needs to be perpendicular diagonal. That's why we draw that. So pretty good though. Uh, who else? Anybody else? Absolutely sure. Don't want me to take a look. I saw um, Austin's here, right? Austin, yours is fucking amazing. These are really good. Just wanted to make mention of that because I looked at that and then did a double take and like, wait a second, did I put a textbook in here? Because holy shit, man, very good. Yeah, no problem. Uh, who else was uh, that? Stacy. Uh, what's your last name? Matters. There you are. Okay. Take a look. Okay, so there's the spheres. They look pretty close, except for that one, maybe. See the other two. Oh, the that picture is very, very blurry. Hard for me to see. Looks okay though. This one's good. That one's good. This one's good. A little distorted from too much um, square shape on this bottom face. Um, that one's great. That one's pretty good. This one again got a little too distorted. But in general, I think you're you're gonna be fine with the cubes. Um, Oh, I saw these cylinders before. Cylinders are great. Yep, those are all working. So it's the spheres. Um, are you putting a center point? I don't see one. I think you're not. Because one, I don't see it now. Two, all of your skewering lines are offset a little bit. So I think you're relying too much on your wrapping lines, not enough on, here's the center. Yeah, so put that center in there because when you don't, you, you're you doing like really difficult calculation, I guess. So I'm like, so here's my ball. And then I say, and here's a disc. See, I, I just naturally always want to put a line through. I'm just gonna try to not. And then here's my other disc. Ugh. Okay, and then I draw through those points. Did I get it? Kind of. That was where the center point... Oh, oh, this hurts my head. That's where the center point was. I missed it. Be so put that in first, right? Basically, you're supposed to center your ellipses on it anyway because at some angle or other, there's going to be... Um, this is the direction that that disc is going. And then you use it to locate these two points which your ellipse has to hit. So center point first, lines through the center point, whoop, perpendicular lines through that, and then however fat or thin 
those wrapping lines need to be and it helps quite a bit so even when you do a terrible job of drawing an ellipse like I just did it ends up being okay <laughs> all right yep um, anybody else all right you guys pretty confident doing the homework and using quick poses doing it now Well, don't settle for that. Just just go go again, right? If you get like this guy, like Mr. Baggy Pants Snowboard dude, like no, fuck that. I'm I'm going to no. draw this one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. Right. The clothing ones can sometimes be interesting though because you'll get extra hints from like the cinch of a corset or like pinstripes or something. So it's worth looking sometimes, but yeah, the nudes are going to be way easier. <laughs> okay, great. All right, you guys. Well, if that's it and you guys are confident, that's it for today. I'm going to see if I can help Lydia out with uh, technology problems between now and the next time. And although I was recording the whole thing, I will cut out all that suffering that we did. <laughs>